You can spend millions of dollars on a beautiful facade, but it is the people that work inside that really matter in making a business successful. Meet Robin. She's a hardworking secretary that's dedicated to her job. She types all day writing reports. But it's starting to hurt her wrists. When she talks on the phone, she puts her neck and shoulders in a bad position. Her shoulders hurt. Ow! She reaches too far and strains her lower back. By the end of the day, she's slouching in her chair and has poor posture. Oh, her back hurts. Who can help her? Evaluation station Fakes and up your office and workstation set up Ergo Evaluation Station We set up your chair and your desk and your keyboard We remediate, educate We give you advice, hey that's nice Hello ladies Thanks for coming. My name's Mr. Budget. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you too. I understand you're here to talk to uh, people who work here about ergonomics. Yeah, that's right. I'm a little afraid that that's eventually going to come across my desk, something we're going to have to try to pay for. We just do not have the budget for that. Okay. And it's just not the way we do things around here, to be frank. So uh -huh. thank you very much for coming and have a nice day. Bye bye, ladies. We don't need no evaluation. Welcome to the Fast Money Minute. I'm your host, Bling Bling McGee. Today we're talking about ways that we can save your organization loads of money in these troubled economic times. Uh, today we've got a guest with us, Mr. Budget, and we'll be talking with him about the implementation of an ergonomics program. Uh, Mr. Budget, uh, we know you've been looking at the possibility of an ergonomics program within your organization. Can you discuss possibly some, some of the problems and specific concerns that you have about that program? Well, organizations across the board have had to slash payroll and cut jobs too, unfortunately, and this recession is particularly making it difficult in these uh, times, especially for educational institutions and hospitals alike. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. McGee, unfortunately, I only even carry red pens in my pocket anymore, because all we deal with in my organization is red ink. I hear you, Mr. Budget. We are all bleeding red ink, especially in this economy. Can you tell me some of your specific concerns and fears with the implementation of this program? Well, I mean, first I'd like to say, bling bling, that, you know, of course our employees are the backbone of our organization, and we want to take care of them. And a happy, healthy employee is, is an employee that makes us money. And an employee that's injured, of course, is, is costing us in the long run as well, and of course costing that person. Quite frankly, I know we need to take care of our employees, and I know ergonomics is an important issue, but we just don't have the budget for it right now. Well, thank you for your concerns, Mr. Budget. Joining the discussion now are Amy Davis and Christine Van Osdahl, students from the School of Occupational Therapy at Pacific University, Oregon. Now, ladies, we've, we've all heard reports that you have designed an ergonomics program for the university. Um, can you discuss and tell us about your program and maybe dispel some of the fears that uh, you heard my previous guest, Mr. Budget, addressing? Well, we started the process by performing a SWOT analysis, which consisted of internal and external data. We did a top-down approach for Pacific University where we interviewed the department heads and then we also interviewed the health and wellness coordinators for Virginia Garcia and Tuolumne Health. In addition to that, we did a literature review. We looked at national and state statistics, and we also reviewed some of the previous ergonomic evaluations performed by the students at the School of Occupational Therapy. 
We understand Mr. Budget's point of view. It's really difficult to think about beginning an ergonomics program in time of an economic downturn, but when an employee is experiencing pain or symptoms of a musculoskeletal disorder, it really ends up costing a company more in the long run. Our program is focused on prevention, and we think that prevention is the key. Through our internal data analysis, we found some interrelated themes amongst Pacific University, Oregon, Tuolity Health, and Virginia Garcia. Uh, one of those was lack of knowledge, and the lack of knowledge and expertise related to ergonomics impacted both policy and procedure and prevention programs, as well as employees' ability to report pain symptoms. We also found that there was a lack of adjustability in the furniture that was selected for employees, and these are employees that have a wide range of characteristics and need a variety of options for furniture. The School of Occupational Therapy also has a history of providing ergonomic evaluations for Tuolity Healthcare and Virginia Garcia. We feel that it would be most cost effective if the three facilities work together to provide ergonomics evaluations for, for their employees in a variety of services. In fact, the Safe Corporation, one of the leading workers' compensation companies in the state, suggests that organizations provide preventative health and safety programs for their employees, and that includes ergonomics to reduce workers' compensation costs. We already have all the elements in place. We just need to organize our efforts and put the finishing touches on to develop an established ergonomics program for the university. In fact, some ergonomics programs have already been very successful. In fact, let me just read you some statistics here. Colby College reduced their workday entry rate and total loss workdays by over 95% and reduced their workers' compensation costs by $100,000 per year since implementing their ergonomics program. And locally, Intel decreased their total recordable cases and lost workday rates 95% company-wide. And in comparison to other comparable companies, Intel ranked number one in having the lowest rates of ergonomic injuries. Bling Bling, our program addresses three things, education, remediation, and prevention. We're already providing remediation when the School of OT performs ergonomic evaluations for employees who are experiencing symptoms. And we all know that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Not only will an ergonomics program improve the health and well-being of employees, but ultimately it's a money savings program. We're decreasing the risk of employees developing more serious problems in the future. Bottom line, not investing in ergonomic health and safety will cost organizations more money. Well, Mr. Budget, it sounds to me like these occupational therapy students have given you something to think about and can maybe help you get that red ink problem fixed and get you using the black ink again. I'd like to thank my guests today, of course, Mr. Budget from the Budget Office, Amy Davis and Christine Van Osdahl from the School of Occupational Therapy from Pacific University. Oregon. For the Fast Money Minute, I am Bling Bling McGee. See you next time. Occupational therapy is good.